This is also our Grove's uh, anniversary. We uh, became the Sylvan Sanctuary of the Druid Realms of the Three Orders. It's an independent order. We created it ourselves in 2008 um, and on, on, this, on this particular ritual day. And so um, it's a delightful thing 12 years later. Um, and really it's longer than that because we were a study group and we belonged to another order for a while. So really this has been going on now since about 2006, which adds a couple more years to it, but officially 12 years. And I don't know what your experience is, but uh, pagan groups and Druid groups don't often last that long, uh, much less last with vigor and community and um, all the things that we enjoy of one another. So I'm, I'm deeply grateful for that fact and for all of our presences here tonight. Um, so the, 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 root, the ritual doesn't require a lot of uh, preamble, so I'm not gonna say much more. I will say to you that tonight we're doing a double working because of our intentions to let go of burdens that we're ready to let go of and uh, then to offer gratitudes for uh, the things that we are truly grateful for. And I'll even offer some explanation as we get into it, but for the letting go working, I'm gonna extinguish everything and pretty much be in the dark. Um, and we'll see if I can stumble through that. So, but when the screen goes dark, just know that that's intentional. And then for the gratitudes part, I'll relight the center candle. Um, so I will point out on the altar, there's um, uh, a lovely black uh, cauldron that, um, my, that Miriam gave me for my birthday recently. Um, it's full of water representing Danu's cauldron. Danu is also known as the Morgan, which is a title. Um, and um, it's full of water. It's got a gold candle floating on it. Uh, this is also where the world tree, we imagine the world tree to be. Um, and then I've got three sprigs of holly uh, around the top. So um, that's some of the symbolism for tonight. We are also, I'm delighted to say, going to be um, uh, initiating uh, a Tandy uh, into our grove as a full druid. Um, she got in touch with me this week and reminded me that um, this has been four years ago, uh, has really stayed in touch with not only the grove, but in touch with what's happening with her and decided that this was the right time. And I agreed with her, so I'm excited about that as well. All right, so let's begin. We gather in this grove on the darkest night of the year to release into the darkness those burdens that we are ready to release and to await the kindling of new light for a new year with our gratitude on this planet so much in need of our attention, our care, and the energies of the universe to survive the damage humanity has done to her. So we come on this darkest night to release the burdens we are ready to release and to offer gratitude into the newly kindled light in the Northern Hemisphere. As we do so, we also celebrate the 12th anniversary of our Grove Sylvan Sanctuary. You can tell from our covenant that we are pledged to ourselves, to each other, to you who gather with us and to the earth herself. We renew those covenants tonight. We come to pledge our work, our magic, our intentions, and our lives to help restore balance between the worlds, the earth our mother, and the sacred realms. And so let us begin by offering and calling for peace in the eight gates. Let there be peace in the northwest at the Sound Gate. Let there be peace in the north at the Alban Arthwin Gate. Let there be peace in the northeast at the Immolt Gate. Let there be peace in the east at the Alban Isler Gate. Let there be peace in the southeast at the Beltane Gate. Let there be peace in the south at the Alban Heroin Gate. Let there be peace in the southwest at the Lunasar Gate. 
Let there be peace in the West at the Alden Ellawood Gate. Our grove is established in peace. Let us reaffirm aloud the grove's covenant. And I'll read a line and um, ask you to repeat it back. And those of you who are not members of the grove, are welcome to repeat these lines with us. I think you'll find them very affirming, even if you're not a member of the Grove. We are a community of Druids walking personal paths. We are a community, a community of Druids, Druids walking, walking personal, personal paths. paths. We have a vital relationship with the Earth, our mother. We have a we have vital relationship, relationship with the Earth, our mother. We celebrate the sun and its sacred days. We celebrate the sun and its sacred days. We hear the call to the inner life, and we are weaving a wisdom that is both personal and communal. We hear the call to the inner life, and we are weaving a wisdom that is both personal and communal. We each have special work that we do. We each have special work that we do. For ourselves. For ourselves. For ourselves. For others, for, for, others. for the community, and for, for the community. community, we find our balance in the three: the sky, the earth, and the sea. We, we find our balance in the three: the sky, the earth, and the sea. We come to honor the three realms and the three cauldrons within us, and the ancestors, guides, and spirits that attend us, and to make this offering tonight of birch a wood of purification and new beginnings. Candace, you may go ahead. We come in this darkness when the earth is our part of her is least alive least warm, least showing signs of the life force. Dear Mother, we have brought to you here our offering of birch, and with these offerings, we honor you who give and sustain our lives. With these offerings, we commit to you our work in the coming year to live a more sustainable life, to do all in our power to protect you, care for you, and honor you with our living bell branch. With our living, <laughs> that's good. Receive these offerings from your human children. Receive our love, receive our sorrow for living in ways in the past that have brought you and other life forms harm. Receive our earnest desire to support life and not death. To you, we make these offerings. Let us sing together three Awens. With the sacred land always supporting us the eternal sea surrounding us, the endless sky above us, the world tree Bile and the cauldron of Danu, the Morrigan, aid us to connect the realms through our bodies, bringing wisdom, sight, and help. We acknowledge the three fires that give light, warmth and life to all, First, to the spirits of this land and this place, be with us and guide us. Be our hospitable host as we are your gracious guests.
We acknowledge the second fire, the fire of the ancestors, of blood and of culture, that we carry in our hearts and thoughts. Be with us and inspire us. Be our excellent exemplars as we are your devoted descendants. We acknowledge the third fire, the great fire of the gods and goddesses, the power, the powers and inhabitants of the other world. Be with us and enlighten us. Be our perpetual patrons as we are your constant clients. I invite you all now to participate with us in our Celtic cross of protection. We raise this Celtic cross of energy over all of ourselves, all of our loves, all of our beloved pets, and anyone else that you wish to hold in this space. I particularly invite you now, and we'll pause to do this, to call out those who are, who are sick, who are suffering, who are in need, of our energy and our prayers. Who, shall, who else shall we include tonight in this Celtic cross of protection? Ron and Valerie. Samuel. And Emma Carroll and Bob. Sandra. Sam and Michelle. Lily and Sherry. Amethyst and Corey and Amanda and Lily. My father, William Clark. Cressy Evans. So I invite you now either to stand or to sit. Make sure your feet are flat on the floor and gently close your eyes. Bring your attention to your breathing. Breathing in and out. Imagine that your feet are planted down deep in the core of the earth where things are fluid and liquid and hot and full of energy. And your shoulders and your upper body extend out into the cosmos so that your head and your hand, your arms and shoulders are out among the planets and the stars. And with your next inhale, extend your dominant hand up into the cosmos and wiggle your fingers around in cosmic sky energy. And with your next in-breath, draw it down through the top of your head, into your forehead, into your chest, down your body, below your belly button, and make little circles there. Breathe sky energy down into your body. Now with that same hand, reach down where your feet are, deep in the core of the earth, and wiggle your fingers around and see energy, all the moving liquids of the planet, the streams and rivers and oceans and the hot molten core of the earth. And with your next inhale, draw that sea energy up through your legs, into that space below your belly button, up through your body to your heart, and up through your body to your forehead. And breathe in sea energy.
Now extend your arms out in both directions to the horizon. Wiggle your fingers around in earth energy, all of the energy of this planet and the beings that she has brought forth here. And with your next inhale, draw earth energy in to your body and make a circle of it at your chest and a circle of it below your belly button and a circle of it at your forehead. And breathe in earth energy. Now bring your hands together in front of your chest. And breathe in three breaths where you draw all three of these energies in together in your body where they commingle and integrate and fill you. And with the next in-breath, we're going to use the word emboss and create this dome up over us and over all those we include in this working. Emboss. Emboss. You may be seated if you're standing. Tandy, I would invite you to open your mic so that we can hear you. And okay. I'm going to ask Tandy the questions that arise out of our covenant. And Tandy has some responses prepared, not just today, but this is the whole point of the aspirant period. The, uh, answers that have been cultivating and developing in her uh, for four years, at least. At least. Yes. <laughs> So first of all, Tandy, how have you begun to experience this community of Druids and how has this path become personal for you? Okay, so trying to answer these questions in words proved to be harder than I thought it was going to be. My mind was going a thousand miles an hour and blank at the same time while trying to put pen to paper. So I apologize if my answers are short or jumbled. <laughs> first, I'd like to start out by saying thank you for letting me be part of this family. It has truly meant the world to me. And I finally have a place that I feel comfortable that I can truly be myself without judgment and where everyone is, is somewhat on the path that I am, or at least we're all under the same umbrella together. Um, I've actually been a part of the community of Druids, Pagans, UUs for, uh, and such for many years now. I honestly couldn't even tell you the year that I walked through the doors and I was home because it was such a distant memory that it feels like another lifetime ago. Uh, the moment I walked in for my first ritual, I fell in love with a family of people, the energy, the workings, and the sense of home and community that was present within the group. Wonderful. <laughs> so how can you describe your relationship with the Earth, our mother? Oh, okay. I would describe my relationship with Mother Earth as exactly that, that she is my mother, my provider, my source of nourishment and protection, my home. I love, honor, and respect her more than I could ever put into words. Tandy, what does the Sun Station celebrations mean to you? Uh, they mean the turning of the wheel, um, an end to what was and a beginning to what will become. Uh, it's a time to celebrate and honor Earth, the sun, the sky, the sea, the gods and goddesses, and to give thanks and appreciation to all. Do you perceive a call to the inner life? And what can you describe to us of that? Absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm actually more connected to life, myself, and Earth on a more energetic and spiritual level, um, way more than an intellectual one. Um, as far as like being, you know, like book ready and such. Um, Cause even though I'm constantly learning new things and absorbing like a sponge due to my health issues, I have a severe memory issues. And oftentimes my mind goes completely blank. So I've learned to follow energy and vibes in my intuition more than my mind, which is another reason why I'm so connected with the working um, or with working with the earth and all of her energy. Yeah, yeah. 
How is wisdom becoming a personal and communal experience for you? Uh, it's becoming both a personal and communal experience for me over the past few years because I've been on my druid, pagan, witchy path for as long as I can remember, but I've always had to learn and practice as a solo. I would find people here and there throughout life, but never really connected with them. So I never really had the opportunity to learn and practice within a community until I found this family. Mm. I've, I've had more than, or I'm sorry, I've more than enjoyed to learn and practice um, and have the connections here and the endless well of knowledge within everyone. And the best thing is, is that everyone is more than willing and excited to teach and share with others what they know. And I get excited. Um, I get excited to be able to simply talk with like-minded people and to share all the things that I've learned about over the years and have never really had anybody to share my thoughts with, or at least nobody that honestly understood what I was saying. <laughs> well, that's the perfect seg to the next question. What special work do you do and do you bring to our community? Um, the special work that I do is I'm very intuitive. I work with tarot and I would learn to more, uh, learn more about runes, reading tea leaves, scrying. Uh, I love working with gemstones, different elements of the earth. I do Reiki meditations. And as I've stated before, lots of energy work. I love, love, love rituals and getting to work energetically through music and earth drums. Uh, due to my health issues, I have a hard time knowing uh, how I'm going to be feeling from one hour to the next, so I can never really commit to anything, and that's why I miss so many meetings and such, and can never commit to being uh, actually active and involved in part of teaching classes and workshops or parts of the rituals. But I hope that when I am able to join, that I bring lots of positive energies and attributes so that I do bring a positive impact to our community. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just going to interject here and say I think what we're going to discover once this pandemic is over is that even while we'll go back to gathering in person um, in, in the in the sanctuary uh, and be able to touch and hug and look at each other, um, we're probably going to continue to do things online as well. Um, that would be amazing because like yeah. the people that can't actually leave home all the time would still be able to be there. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so the last question, what does working with the energies of sky, earth, and sea mean to you? And what does balance in them mean to you? Uh, working with the energies of sky, earth, and sea, to me, means everything. It means balance, protection, oxygen, food, life, beauty, grounding, love, literally everything. Without their balance, everything would be off and or non-existent. Um, having balance within the realms means having balance within our souls. Yeah. And, you know, um, one of the things that I'm learning, and, and the thing is, some part of me knew this, has known this for years, but another part of me is, is learning intellectually. The Druids were themselves the Celtic shamans. And they were walkers between the worlds. And their work was to constantly keep balance between this world and the sacred realms. And um, that's what you just articulated beautifully. So, Andy, um, do you accept virtual hugs? I do. <laughs> well, I've, been, I've been learning from TikTok how to do that. And I'm going to invite anybody who wants to, to welcome Candy into our grove as our new druid. Here's my virtual hug. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Here's mine. Hi. Oh, thank you. Candy, I gave you an air hug a couple of weeks ago, so here's my virtual hug. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, thank you again for my gift. <laughs> thank you. Tandy, my virtual hug included a cat within it as well. <laughs> oh, nice! <laughs> Welcome to the Grove, Tandy. And uh, Vicki, who is the keeper of our membership roles, is going to add you to uh, the, the document 
tonight or tomorrow morning. I'm trusting Vicky can hear me. I know she can't, oh, we can't hear her. Um, okay. with, your, with your entry date uh, corresponding to this, the winter solstice. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be part and honored to be a part of this, this family, as I say. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let us continue now with our working. There are three realms in which we do this work. There are five directions and four talismans that we invoke. We gather around the world tree, Bile, and the cauldron of Danu, the Morrigan. Let us call on them now for their help in this working. If you have a sense of the directions and want to stand or sit and turn and face the west, I invite you to do that. We open ourselves to the west and in doing so to the other world and to wisdom. We see here and call into this grove learning teaching, foundations, judgment, counsel, stories, and the eloquence we need for our working. We call upon the cauldron of the doida, and in it we see the generous nature of the universe, and we honor our obligation of hospitality. For whom do we seek the nourishment of the cauldron of the doida? You may call out names if you wish. Yoshika. Lily. My parents and my sister in law and nephew. Tim. By the cauldron of the doida, we have all that we need, wealth of every kind, every soul to feed. Let the cauldron of the doida create compassion and communion among all the peoples of the world. I invite you to face north now. We open ourselves to the north. And in so doing, to the darkness is the source of all that is. We enter into this darkness, deeply aware of our struggles and the battles that we face in this life. May we not be afraid to name here and call into this grove for transformation, the battle, contention, hardships, strife, pride, rough places, and losses those things we go through before transformation. We call upon the stone of fall, and in it we know and accept that we rule our lives and choose our fate. No other may hold our sovereign sacred place. No other may reign over our spirits or the land that is our life in common with others. For whom do we call upon the strength of the stone of destiny? Sarah, Amanda. For the people of this nation. By the stone of destiny, we live what's true with the earth and the shining ones in all that we do. Let the stone of destiny cry out the truth that the world needs today. I invite you to face the east. We open ourselves to the east and in doing so, to the blossoming of all the good things that emerge from the darkness, we seek here the prosperity, good ways of being in the world, abundance, dignity, strength, wealth and hospitality that we need for our working tonight. We call upon the sword of Nuwadu and in, in it we acknowledge the wounds we bear and seek to heal with new life. For whom do we call upon the sword of Nuwadu for healing?
my grandparents, my cousin, and my aunt. My family. For the hundreds of children who still remain separated from their families by our government. My family, here. particularly my grandmother and my uncles and my mother. Or the earth mother herself. By the sword de Nuadu, the torch burns bright. We make it our aim to live in the light. Let the sword de Nuadu shine forth as a torch bringing into the world healing and integrity. I invite you to face the sound. Dandy, we're not hearing you. Oops. There you go. We open ourselves to the South, and in so doing, to the music of the cosmos, let us become one here with the music, honor, fertility, games, passion, creativity, poetry, and all the gifts that flow in us and through us that we need for our working. We call upon the spirit of Lou, and in so doing, we see and appreciate our many gifts, and we choose to live and work with them for good in the world. Take a moment and affirm within yourself those gifts that belong to you. We go forth this day by the spirit of Lou's success in our speech and the good that we do. Let the spear of blue send out the justice that the world needs for this day. Let us face the center of the altar. We open ourselves to the center. We honor the most sovereign and sacred place in this grove, the center, found here in this cauldron, found here in our hearts. Let us know the sovereignty that is each life which this working requires. Each of us are divine beings and being a part of the divine. We seek the power, dignity, stability, crafts, bounty, renown, and self-mastery that we need for our working. We call the world tree Bile and the sacred mother Danu, the Morrigan. And in so doing, the three realms of sky, sea, and earth. Take a moment and see the tree of Bile, the tree of life formed here in the center of our grove. The cauldron gives, the stone makes strong, the sword lives, the spear makes song, the tree gathers the throng. Let the world tree live deeply rooted in the other world and extending the cover of its power to all that lives on the earth. We are now going to open the portals of the three realms so that we may send out our, send our working forth. Our first working we move into complete darkness as the earth turns away from the sun in our part of the world. So let us enter into the darkness as we would a protective cave and find comfort in the shadows as we would a warm covering. Once in the dark, let us call out the things that we're ready to let go of 
And I'm going to ask that we call these out in secrecy. So you hold what it is you're ready to let go of and say something like, I let go of something known to me. It, it strikes me that these need to be offered in secrecy because these are things that we're letting go. And we don't want the naming of anything specific to trigger somebody else or to attach to somebody else. So once you've identified the thing that you want to let go of, I, I let this go. I let something go that is known to me. And you can say that as many times as you need to, and we'll wait until everyone is done. But first, the lights. I let go of something known only to me. I let go of something known only to me. I let go of something known only to me. I let go of something known only to me. I let go of something known to me. I let go of something known only to me. I let go of something known only to me. I let go of something known only to me. I let go of something known only to me. I let go, I let go of something known only to me. I let go of something known. I let go of something known only to me. I let go of something known only to me. I let go of something known only to me. I let go of something known only to me. I let go of something known only to me. I let go of something known only to me. And so now we call upon the energies of the three realms to gather up all these things that we have let go of, to take them up into the three realms and to transform them into things that the universe can use for good and for the balance between this world and the sacred realms. I open a portal into the sky. Let sky energy help us with our working. I open a portal into the sea. Let sea energy help us with our working. I open a portal into the earth energy. Let earth energy help us with our working. And now if you would extend your hands in the dark towards 
this collection of all the things that we've let go. They are bound and collected now by the energies of the three realms. And on the count of three, we send them into the universe for transformation with the word emboss. One, two, three. Emboss! Breathe. Allow yourself to feel those things move and be taken by the three realms. And now we offer into this altar for a second working the things that we hold gratitude for. You may name them specifically. I'm grateful for something. Or you may name them in secrecy. I'm grateful for something known to me. And we'll wait until all are finished before we send these forth also into the universe for the universe to use for the balance between the world and the sacred realms. I am grateful for the guidance of others. I am grateful to my chosen family. I'm grateful for the opportunities that the new year is opening up for me. I am I'm grateful, grateful for those who love me. I'm grateful for the support and love of my parents, my close friends, and my partner. I am grateful for my good health and for this beautiful world. I am grateful for this community, for the gifts that you bring and share and support me with. I am grateful for the relationships that I have been building and I will be building in the future. I'm grateful for the wonder, the wonder that I see in everyone, the love and support I get from everyone, but how beautiful the earth is and how it amazes me every day, every day. And I'm so grateful to be here every day. I'm grateful for the journey. I'm grateful for the love of those close to me. Grateful for the beauty and sustaining power of nature and for my path. I'm grateful for true love expressed every day. I am grateful for community and for new knowledge and new ways of relating and for good health and for me and my family and my loved ones. I'm grateful for creation and the act of creation. I'm grateful for warmth and health and vitality and remembering that these are still within my grasp. I'm grateful for the growing light and the hope on the horizon. I'm grateful for my path as well. 
and for the things that I continue to learn from spirit guides, from human beings, from animal beings, from nature itself. And so let us call now on the three realms to send forth these gratitudes into the universe. I open a portal into the sky. Let sky energy help us with our working. I open a portal into the sea. Let sea energy help us with our working. I open a portal into the earth. Let earth energy help us with our working. And now imagine with me all of our gratitudes bound up and wrapped up by sky, sea, and earth energy. And on the count of three, let us send this forth into the universe for the work of balance between this world and the sacred realms. We'll use the word emboss. One, two, three. Emboss. Take a moment, breathe this moment in. Listen, be aware to any messages that may come to you. If that happens, I encourage you to take a moment tonight to jot those things down. The energy of this ritual tonight has felt very strong to me, despite doing it through a computer. It's amazing to me how that happens. I'm very grateful to you all. Our working is finished. Let any energy remaining from this working descend to the earth, our mother, for her blessing and all goodness. And I'm going to leave you in the dark because that's the way this ritual is supposed to end. Thank you all. Uh, I, Lee, has this been on Facebook Live? Yes. <laughs> cool. And and sometime after this, maybe a recording will appear. Um, so uh, those who didn't get to see it may. Thank you all. Happy New Year in one respect. Happy Yule. And uh, we'll see each other again. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. so much.